Hello and welcome to Saturday Morning Cartoons, the comedy drawing show where I always wolf out by the end of the episode because cause I gotta let my freak flag fly. So welcome back to another episode guys. Today we are going to be drawing none other than Donkey Kong eating a Doritos Locos Tacos. Now this prompt means a lot to me because I am hungry. So I'm going to live vicariously through Donkey Kong as he houses a delicious Taco Bell taco. Let's get into it. I'm going to draw a little bit of an outline here and then I'll be back in a moment. Okay, and welcome back. Here we have kind of a general outline of Donkey Kong about to airplane a Doritos Locos Tacos into his own mouth. So we're just gonna get started here and I hope everyone's having a good day. Thank you to anyone who watched the Mario episode last week and thank you to anyone who's watching the Donkey Kong episode today. I, uh, I've been wondering a lot about Donkey Kong in general, general, general Donkey Kong reporting for duty. Uh, I be daydreaming, I be daydreaming about Donkey Kong recently, and my biggest question, my biggest query is, can Donkey Kong speak English? Or any other language, human language for that matter. I, as far as I know, there's no canonical evidence of him, of him speaking any language. I think he's kind of oops all grunts like a regular monkey. But then that brings into question, how much does he know? How mu I I feel like Donkey Kong knows more than he lets on. I just don't really understand how self-aware Donkey Kong is meant to be. Because it seems like, at the very least, he understands what everyone else is saying to him. I just wish we could get a closer look into his psyche. What makes him click? What grinds his gears? We should do a magic school bus into Donkey Kong's brain. And then Miss Frizzle can help us psychoanalyze him. If we had TV shows like that in school, I would have become so much smarter. I would have been paying attention all the time. If schools could educate us in a way that involves the, the cast and crew of Super Mario World, I'd be all in. This reminds me of, I went I went to Japan this last summer. I got to take a trip to Japan, it was very nice. And when I got there, the second I got there, Mario and his friends were greeting us at the airport. Like literally I could, I was already excited to be there, but then I was jumping, I was jumping out of my boots at the chance to take a photograph with Mario. I'm just saying, teachers, if you're listening to this, just put Toad in the textbook. He doesn't even need to be, he does he doesn't even need to be teaching any of the material or even related. Just put him on the side. Like, let me look at him while I learn. If the teacher tells me to study, I sleep. But if Bowser tells me to study, I'm scared. I'm awake. I'm aware. I'm actively listening to avoid to, uh, to avoid my own demise. What I'm trying to say is, if you're a teacher and your students aren't listening, just dress up as Bowser, your students won't know the difference, and cause a little havoc. Fear makes people smarter. Feels like I lost my point somewhere along the way, but uh, I do think there's value in putting something kids like alongside the thing that they need to learn. At least it, there, there would have been there would have been for me when I was a kid. So yes, I did give Nunk Donkey Kong nipples. Is that gonna be a problem? Is anybody gonna have a problem with that? Again, I don't know if Dink Dinky Dinky Kong has ever had any canonical nip, nip nipple 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 exposure, but. <laughs> a man a man can dream, right? Nintendo, let's make a deal. Give Donkey Kong permanent nipples, and I'll never emulate one of your games again. Anyway, we're gonna give Donkey Kong kind of a vague Taco Bell bag here. Um, I'm thinking maybe we kind of go 
kind of the mukbang route here. It seems like maybe he's he's putting on airs for the camera. Speaking of performative monkeys, have you guys seen that new orangutan that just came out? There's a new orangutan and he's on TikTok and he's he lives at a zoo and people bring him things and people kind of do unboxings for him and he he like wags his finger as if he wants more. I think he's kind of putting on a performance in a way, but also I think he just likes looking at things and I think he's being properly stimulated, which overall I think is a win for everybody. I'm kind of hoping the the Costco guys do a collaboration with the orangutan. I think it would, I, 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 here's the video right here. All right, Big Justice, we're gonna give this orangutan a, a double chunk chocolate cookie and a chicken bake. And we're gonna see how many booms he gives it. All right, first up, the double chunk chocolate cookie. What do you think? Big Justice, I think he likes it. That's gonna be five booms for the double chunk chocolate cookie. Anyway, that's not really even a joke. I think that's actually just how the video would go. Also, I realized that I have now talked about, I have given teachers advice and talked about the Costco guys two videos in a row now. So I don't really know what that's about, but more importantly, guys, this is Donkey Kong about to eat a Doritos Locos Tacos. I kind of added like a camera recording overlay on top because he's recording a mukbang. But it does look like his camera's about to go out of battery, so the fans may not even be able to see his first bite. But why don't we make haste and color this bad boy before it's too late? What do you guys think of Taco Bell? I kind of crave Taco Bell like it's my like it's my God-given right, like it's my duty as an American. I kind of crave Taco Bell on a daily basis, but it does hurt my stomach pretty bad so i can't really i can't be really having it willy-nilly but i really do like it and you know what i like most of all is the frozen baja blast i think that's in my top five things to have ever and that doesn't even just include food like my top five things to have like uh i like to have my phone in my hand because that means it's not lost um, because I have been known to lose my phone and on a separate tangent uh, People know this about me and people have gotten on my case about this But speaking of case I do have a phone wallet case and I have for a long time And people like to tell me that I'm kind of like an 80 year old because I think a lot of old people like f like phone cases but the reason I do it, and I am gonna, and I, I'm saying this because I want to have it on record, so everybody in the future, and everybody in the past, and anybody from an alternate universe can know this. I like to have my phone and wallet all in the same place because, because, because that means if I lose it, and hold, and stay, stick with me, that means if I lose it, I've lost literally everything I own. Which, of course, on the surface sounds bad, but because of that, because of the threat of losing every belonging that matters to me and, and, and exists, that means I am always, always, always holding on to it. If you see me in real life, I will be holding my phone in my hand. Because at this point in my life, if I don't have my phone in my hand, I know something's wrong. So I never leave my phone anywhere now. I never leave my phone wallet anywhere because I know that it has to be in my hand at all times. I know if it's not in my hand, then something is wrong. So that's kind of my foolproof plan. I think it probably wouldn't work for everybody, but it hasn't steered me wrong yet. I haven't lost my phone in years. I've been using a phone case probably since 2017. And before 2017, I was like a, I was like a, I was like the opposite of a bandit. I was, uh, I guess is the opposite of stealing losing? Anyway, I think I would be kind of the opposite of a bandit. I was losing things left and right. I was losing my wallet. I was losing my keys. I was losing my phone. 
I was lose I was losing my mind, no doubt about that. But that does bring up another issue, my keys. So I kind of haven't figured out the key situation yet. There's no good way to attach my keys to my phone and my wallet. So as of right now, I keep the only key I have, which is my house key, inside my pocket loose, which I know, I do know that this is unoptimal. I understand that and I know that and I'm super aware of that, but to be fair, I have only lost my keys like twice, which on second thought may be kind of a lot. So regardless, I, I be copying my key. Look, I be copying my keys at the Home Depot. I be copying my keys at the Home Depot all the time. And so I have copies coming out of my metaphorical and literal pants. Um, so I'm not worried if I, I'm giving my, I'm giving my keys away. I say I, I, I tell everybody I know you can have this and it's on the house and it's literally it can get you in my house. And so if you're watching this and you want one of my house keys, just you can have it. I'll give it to you. I'll leave it. Actually, this is how about this? I'll do a one piece. I'm going to leave my key. I'm going to leave. Actually, I'll do a Willy Wonka. I'm going to leave five of my golden keys somewhere, somewhere in the world. And if you find it, you have access to my house and all of my belongings. And you can do whatever you want. But the caveat to this is that... Once the five of you find my keys around the world and you come into my house, I'm going to, I'm going to do, I have to, I'm going to make you do an escape room. Okay. Let's color his nipples. Can I be honest? I actually have never played a Donkey Kong game. That's why I have so many questions about this guy. I don't know anything about him. I don't know his origin story. I don't know if he's ever been to school. I don't know. I don't know if he has a girlfriend. And uh, I just want to know more about you, man. What if the drawing just talked back to me? I really wish I could scribble knots my way to success. I wish I could just draw someone and they could come to life. Who would you guys draw and bring to life if you had a choice? I guess you could, you could just draw yourself and then kind of have a clone of yourself. But unless you're like a really good artist, like a realism artist, you... The new you is probably going to be a little freaky, but I'm down to have a couple freaks. Me and a couple, me and a, me and a couple of my freak friends go to a go to go going out on the town on a Friday night. Sounds like a plan to me. I think because my friends are being freaks, that'll give me more leeway to be my own freak and kind of let my own freak flag fly. Speaking of, I think there's a full moon tonight. I told you it would happen, guys. I told you it would happen. It always does. So anyway, I am now a wolf off camera. I'm not going to show you guys because I'm a little bit embarrassed. But this is perfect timing because Dinky Kong is officially done and colored. So that's going to do it for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to comment any suggestions you'd like to see me draw in the future. And stay safe out there, y'all. Don't wolf out like me unless you want to. Okay, I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys. Bye.